Hello and welcome to the Fly Kingfisher Winning Post. I'm Mohit Lalvani and as always there's plenty on tap today. In fact on this show we move away from India which is where I am right now as the season ends and head internationally. Let's start right at the top with all the international news. With a week to go to the start of the English Classics for 2012, Camelot tops 26 acceptors for the Quipco 2000 guineas. Aidan O'Brien's charge remains a hot favourite for the Raleigh Mile Classic after a runaway success in last season's Racing Post Trophy and is one of the three entries going forward for the master of Ballad Oil. Ballad Oil may also be represented by the Group 1 National Stakes winner Par and the Group 3 Leopardston 2000 Guineas trial winner Furness Green. The Roger Charlton Crane top offer remains in the list after missing his prep run in the Greenham Stakes at Newbury and will come into the Classic with only a maiden success to his name. Richard Hannon has five entries at this stage including the Craven Stakes winner Trumpet Major. With Richard Hughes back in action on Wednesday, the jockey will be looking for his first English 2000 Guineas victory. Godolphin could be represented by Mandayan who easily won last season's Group 1 Criterium de saint Clou when trained in France by André Favre. He will be joined by the highly thought of Mighty Ambition who ran fifth in the Craven. Jim Bolger has two remaining entries headed by the Group 1 Dubai Dewar Stakes winner Parish Hall and the progressive light heavy who won the Group 3 Ballysack Stakes over 10 furlongs on his last start. A few years ago, the champion See the Stars began his memorable three-year-old campaign with a victory in the 2009-2000 Guineas and his three-parts brother born to see could be looking to follow in his footsteps for John Ox. Meanwhile, in the 1000 Guineas, Maybe is one of the 24 fillies going forward at the latest forfeit stage. The daughter of Galileo carried all before her in an unbeaten juvenile campaign which culminated with a Group 1 victory in the Moigle Start Stakes at the Curra in August. Trained by Aidan O'Brien, she could be joined by recent Leopardston 1000 Guineas trial winner homecoming queen Up and Wonderful. The Irish could also be represented by last year's Group 1 Jack Wakar, Shivli Park Stakes winner Lightning Pearl and David Watchman's filly Fire Lily. The latter was second in the Group 1 Pre Marcel Boussac at North Shore in October. And she's back in third position and she's not going to win. It's going to be another one in the Marcel Boussac for John Ghost and his third win the race in this game. Godolphin's discourse created a huge impression when winning the Group 3 Sweet Solera last July. The filly will be joined by stable companion Lyric of Light, who rounded off an unbeaten juvenile campaign with last gasp success in the Group 1 Shadwell Phillies Mile over the course of distance. Both fillies worked on the Rowley Mile recent and will be bidding to give their trainer Mahmoud Al Zaruni a second success in the Classic after Dubunting's victory last year. Meanwhile, after an injury and a subsequent clear scan, horse of the year Frankel was back on the heat and Sir Henry Cecil's incredible cold stepped up his recovery with a piece of work on Wednesday morning. He capped off the year with a sterling victory in the QE2 to prove that he was one of the greatest, not just for 2012, but who have ever graced a racetrack. The Khalid Abdullah own son of Galileo stretched his unbeaten record to nine during a stellar 2011 campaign with breathtaking performances in the 2000 Guineas, one of the highlights of his career so far. The lock in stakes at Newbury on the 19th of May remains his intended comeback target, but the owner's racing manager, Teddy Grinthorpe, is keen to take things one day at a time. And finally, across the pond in the US, Daddy Longlegs, the winner of the UAE Derby in 2012, has been confirmed as a runner to the Kentucky Derby. No horse outside of the United States has ever won this race. Trying to reach him, Yangtze coming at the pair. Yangtze going after Daddy Longlegs, but Daddy Longlegs found more. He's in front and he's won the Derby. Frankel has entries in both the One Mile Queen Anne Stakes and the 10 Furlong Prince of Wales Stakes at Royal Ascot in June. He capped off the year with a sterling victory in the QE2 to prove that he was one of the greatest, not just for 2012, but who have ever graced a racetrack. Well, let me try and bring you as many of those races as we possibly can on the Fly King Fisher winning post. On that note, we'll take a break, come back. The Singapore Racing Awards, that's next. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Fly Kingfisher winning post. Now moving right along as they do across the globe in all sports, they have awards to recognize great champions. Recently, the Singapore Racing Awards were held in Singapore and no surprises, Rocketman was at the top of the chart yet again. 
The Singapore Racing Awards for 2011 was held on the 16th of February at the Grand Hyatt. With the Who's Who of horse racing in attendance, this was an event that was spectacular to say the least. With a number of categories including some for age brackets, the nominees for champion two-year-old included Dark Matter with four victories for the Hippocrates stable from Steve Burridge's yard, Kaiser, who was trained by Theo Kaiser and owned by the Griffin stable, and Mr. Big from Michael Friedman's yard who had won the Group 2 Oshorse Gold in Horseshoe and the Group 3 Magic Million Juvenile Championship for the ONT stable. The winner was Mr. Big. Yeah, it's a big thrill. I mean, um, I've been here a few years now, and to get a, a nice two-year-old like Mr. Big to win a race, or win, win a, an award like this in a few races, it was, um, yeah, great. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of runners tonight a bit later on, which I'm looking forward to seeing how they go. And fingers crossed, the, the reports coming back from James are very good, so looking forward to that, and I'll head over there next week for, um, for a couple of races next Thursday night, and hopefully building up towards the World Cup on the 31st of March. The champion three-year-old for 2011 was contested between three very talented horses. Patrick Shaw's R.G. Bargy who won the Group 3 Paititi Gold Cup for the British Stable. Cliff Brown's Group 1 Singapore Guinea's second place finisher Clear for Action who races in the Newbury Racing Stable Silks. And Gingerbread Man from Bruce Marsh's Yard who won three group races for the Gingerbread Stable which included the Group 1 Singapore Guineas. The winner was Gingerbread Man. Oh, absolutely thrilled and very proud of the horse. Well, actually, he's booked to go to Dubai, and he'll race uh, the 1600 metres on the turf on the 1st of March. The champion four-year-old had four nominees, including multiple Group 1 winner Better Than Ever from Laurie Laxon's yard. Better Than Ever represented the Jupiter Stable, and his victories included the Group 1 Panasonic Cron G Mile to his list of successes during the year. Also nominated were Clint from Cliff Brown Stable who had won the Group 1 Emirates Singapore Derby for the Oscar Racing Stable, Fat Kid from HK Town Stable who won the Group 2 QE2 Cup for the Fat Boy Stable and Speed Baby who won the Group 1 Raffles Bowl for Steve Burridge and the Eastern Stable. The winner was better than ever. The final category for age brackets was the award for Singapore's Best Older Horse. Steve Burgess' charge captain Obvious won a nomination here by virtue of his victory in the Jumbo Jet Trophy in addition to three other races for the Milton Stable. So to the Takaoka Singapore Gold Cup hero El Dorado who won the Group 1 for the Big Valley Stable for the third time in his career. However, they will all have to contend with Singapore's brightest star, Rocket Man, who did Patrick Shaw and Fred Crabia proud in the international Group 1s, the Dubai Gold in Shaheen, and the Chris Flyer International Sprint. The winner, not surprisingly, was Rocket Man. Could you also just uh, start looking at, at, at his, uh, the career he's had and, and it's just been amazing. I mean, he's one of those horses that one in a lifetime horses and uh, yeah, what can I say? You, you start thinking, you know, well, what after him? And uh, how difficult is it going to be to ever have this kind of of us again. Uh, I don't think it's something that one will ever see again. Every day um, when I look at him, I'm waiting for him to tell me I've had enough. The day that happens, he'll be going for, for good deserved uh, retirement. The categories shifted to specialist categories and the nominees for champion sprinter, needless to say, included Rocketman. Better be the one who represented the J-Man stable and Michael Friedman in the Alcos in Dubai also found recognition as did the Group 3 Kranji Sprint winner Gozi who was trained by John O'Hara and owned by the Winoro stable. 
Not surprisingly, Rocketman won this yet again. Look, um, you know, you, you always uh, know how he is. He, he seems to sort of just keep with him and run at the pace. It doesn't matter whether it's fast or slow. He's always with him. And then, you know, at the last 100, 200, he just puts on that power and just kicks in and just takes off. And, and, and that is what excites you and drives you nuts. I mean, in uh, Dubai, it was just the way he ran there. He just kept with him. And then at the last 150, 200, he just took off. And, so he's an amazing animal. You know, it's an honour training this horse. Um, I'm actually honoured to be associated with him. Um, he's special. Uh, he's one of those that I, I'll dream of ever getting again. And um, he's just, he's just uh, phenomenal. The Champion Milo Award was taken over an average and included Better Than Ever who found a nomination here, as did Michael Friedman's Always Certain, who won the Group 2 Raffles Cup for the Horizon Stable. Gingerbread Man, not surprisingly, also found a nomination here, as did the Steve Burridge Train Speed Baby, who stormed home for the Eastern Stable in the Group 1, Patron's Bowl. Better Than Ever took his second trophy home. The champion steer for the year went to El Dorado, who edged out Fat Kid and Clint for a well-deserved honour for what has been a remarkable career. With five contenders for the best poly track runner of the year, this was always going to run close since it included all ages and distances. Michael Friedman's Dictator ran in the silks of the Lansdowne 9 stable and held a course record for 1100 meters, while Jamal Malik from Patrick Shaw's yard had won the Polytrack Mile Championship for the Team Men's stable. Dr. Gregorius from ZL Mark's yard represented the Pies stable, and Southeaster and other Patrick Shaw charge represented the Juston Cantor stable. You Got It from Leslie Koo's yard represented the Celestial King stable and made up the category nominees. And the winner was Mr. Gregorius. The most improved horse went to the Newbury Racing Stables Atto, who was trained by Patrick Shaw. Atto, I think he's he's a he's an exceptionally talented horse. Um, I don't think we've seen the best of him. Uh, I believe that you know he's gonna crack a big one one day. He's a very funny character because you know he's still a, he's still a, a cult and uh, he still thinks a bit. But uh, you know for me he's had a good break. He's had one run back now and obviously he ran a good second behind super easy. But uh, you know for me he's he's a very talented horse and I think he's still gonna keep on improving and he's gonna be a very genuine genuine horse at group level. So uh, it's gonna be interesting what we're gonna end up doing with him. But, uh, you know, it would be, would be nice if he can get sort of a trip to Dubai this year. But uh, we'll have to see how he performs in his next couple of starts. But uh, I was very, very uh, happy for also uh, David Evans from South Africa. You know, he's invested a lot of money here. So it's nice for him to also get a bit of acknowledgement here in Singapore. The champion jockey was Brazilian, Hal Moreira. Well, it's it's very. I would say it's a promise year. Uh, I must say I have a very good beginning, and I I will keep pushing until the end of the year to see if I can get some nice marks again. I know it's a little bit tough. I has got so many new jockeys, and I would I must say they are pretty good also. And I just hope that the result keep comes, and and I will keep doing as my best. I will keep doing my best. And the champion apprentice was record breaker Rizwan Shafi. You know, I've been with good boss, and I'm my boss very support me, and I'm always give me chance to ride better horse, and I'm yeah. From him, I get this result, and I'm here. Hopefully, I get sub kick, get supporting from other trainer too. Also, I can keep doing my best to be here next season yeah uh, the people of racing to honor these athletes because like you know without without the thoroughbreds we won't be here so uh, it's just great for us to be able to 
to celebrate and, and give a bit of a tribute to them. And, and it's even bigger privilege of being part of them. So uh, yes, I'm really privileged to, to have been on him and uh, you know, still going at the height of his career, doing what he's doing and being part of that is very special. Well, I was just saying earlier on that he's a horse of a lifetime and while we're in the moment which we're in at the moment, we've got to enjoy it because yeah, you never know if you're ever going to have the, the privilege of being associated with a horse like this. And um, I guess that's why you go to the yearling sales and look for another one. He's, he's actually become more of a people's horse in the sense that everybody knows him. But the personal equation that I've got with him is he's a superbly intelligent animal who responds to our voices and our, you know, our, the way we work with him. And um, obviously he holds the most special place in my heart and in everybody else's heart. The evening was a grand success and winners and nominees alike were already looking ahead to next year's awards. Rocketman will be targeted to the Chris Flyer Sprint next. We'll take a short break, come back and find out how he's doing. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. Now, managing a champion is never easy. This is a company that's mastered the art of managing to a perfection. One of the most remarkable success stories in the horse racing industry is about a company called Nature Vet. Based out of Australia, Nature Vet has serviced the global and Indian racing markets with years of high quality products and services. Products and services that have worked not just at helping a racehorse to be a better performer at the races, but a happier horse at home too. It was therefore not surprising that Nature Vet was acquired to play a larger role in a bigger pie. Well, NatureVet has recently been incorporated into the animal health division of the French company SIVA, who have a global presence in animal health. This union should allow NatureVet to continue to be a leader in uh, the products that are required for sporting, pleasure and companion animals. With a wide range of NatureVet products developed over the years, the company has a keen understanding of the requirements of equine athletes at not just different levels of development, but of different levels of training and management as well. Well, the, the main aim of NatureVet has always been to look at all of the parts of the animals that require treatment. So with racehorses in particular, we have treatments for foot problems, for joint injuries, to uh, other products that are related to the muscles that are used during racing, also respiratory and also looking at the blood system as well. So the products are, are a good range and they're all based on, on trials that have been done on these horses. Horse racing puts great stress on a horse's limbs and the wear and tear on the joints require great management. In this regard, one of the most popular products in the market is NatureVet's Pentasan. While Pentasan has stood the test of time, the improvement process by NatureVet has continued to innovate and create. Well, Pentasan has got a history of being a well-run company, uh, NatureVet, which has produced the product, and you know that what you get uh, is exactly what you're getting. But at NatureVet, are, at the moment, are going to release trial uh, results of some very new innovative joint treatments in November in Australia which will have a big effect worldwide on, on animals. Buying a nature vet product is simple for breeders and trainers in Asia. They are distributed by the award-winning firm Mano Equestrian Services which is based out of Singapore. Nature vet has a distributor in Singapore which is Mano Equestrian and everything channels through him as a hub. So. Uh, anybody wishing to acquire the products, he is the, that is the company to go to. So Mano Equestrian, and uh, it's a well-known company in India. I've travelled with uh, Mano over there many times and he is well-known in the industry. Well, uh, we've been in business for the last 16 years and last six years we have 
taken over the distributorship of NatureBat products into the regional market and using Singapore as a hub, we supply to 10 over countries including subcontinent of India and East Asia as well. The added advantage of being a main distributor of uh, NatureBat products gives us A, competitive in pricing to quality of the product. Three, innovation of a newer products that has come into the equine industry. And of course, um, apart from what we do, we create a lot of what we call branding and educational seminars to enlighten our customers all about the newest product and how a good product mix can help the horses uh, perform better in the industry. Well, it's time now for Tipping Tim and Morning Glories. With the International Weekend in Singapore less than a month away, Rocketman will be back in action in the Lion City Cup on Sunday. This is a race that the world's second highest rated sprinter has won three years in a row and was his final lead up to the International Group 1 Chris Flyer sprint last year. His recent morning trial was outstanding and the son of Viscount blew the opposition away. I'm in the Lion City Cup and Rocket Man nicely clear, 400 metres to go. Better be the one asked for his effort now by Danny Beasley. He's three lengths away, followed by Northern Lion. Capablanca begins to run on, followed by Gozi and mighty Triple Ace. But Vorster clicked up a gear with Rocket Man. Three straight Lion City Cups. He's untouchable. He's going to absolutely annihilate them again. We are certainly the privileged ones. Rocket Man, he's down in the wire and a great group one victory for Vorster wins by five. While Baron Voster will give way to Felix Kutzi, who will ride Rocketman this weekend, Voster will be on stable mate Atto. Better be the one from Michael Friedman's yard will run as well, and the dark horse in the race is Steve Burridge's Black Ice. Black Ice is the very unsound and equally talented winner from last weekend. A field of seven will start in the Singapore Group 1 race, and most will be looking to back Rocketman to exclusion. Well, now we did promise you we'd let you know how Rocketman is doing next up is Tipping Tim. Rocketman's connections will not just be looking for a victory, but will be looking for a statement. It has been confirmed that Krypton Factor, the winner of the 2012 Golden Shaheen, will challenge Rocketman back at home in Singapore in the Chris Flyer Sprint. Most will remember in a pace that was to Rocketman's undoing, Krypton Factor challenged him up the straight in Dubai and went past him for an easy win. Most pundits believe, however, back at home in Singapore, the story will be a different one. And that's all we have on this episode of the Fly Kingfish Show Winning Post. As always, thank you for joining me. Till I see you in a week's time, goodbye and may the horse be with you. Fisher Winning Post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.